Good afternoon, everyone. Join us for our monthly Prop Funders Community Webinar. Uh, absolutely delighted you could once again uh, join us. Uh, delighted today to be joined initially by Julianne White. Hi, Julianne. How are you? Hi, David. Good. What about you? Yeah, doing very well indeed. Very well. And uh, we will be joined by uh, Todd Walker. Um, he's just been held up a little bit in traffic, but he will be joining us for uh, his special tips on uh, property developer brand building. Uh, so you look forward to that whenever uh, he, he joins in. Um, so today, the topic that we're going to be covering on our webinar is very much around this building balance or strategies for work-life balance, uh, particularly around the world of property. Um, and we're going to be really getting into this, um, Julianne, just in a, in a few moments. Um, I'll do a more formal introduction of you maybe at, the, at, at that point. Uh, but suffice to say, you're obviously um, in Northern Ireland, where I am as well. Yes, Northern Ireland, sunny weather here today, thankfully. Yeah, I was going to come on to that. Unfortunately, you're up at the North Coast, so you're getting the, the best place to be when the sun shines. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. I wish I wish we could swap. I'm down in Belfast. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come on to that in a few minutes. So, um, so again, welcome, everyone. Uh, if you're on live now or listening to the recording, uh, thank you for spending this sort of 45, 50 minutes with us. And let's get straight into it and provide as much value um, as we can, as probably all of you know, in case you're a new person to this uh, monthly webinar, my name is David Johnson and I am the, the CVO, which is the Chief Vision Officer of Prop Funders. And uh, let me run you through um, some things that have happened, quite exciting things have happened within the world of Prop Funders uh, before we get on to our special topic for today. So um, if you were to go on to our Prop Funders website, um, you will see there will be a propfunders.com forward slash welcome. And uh, in fact, just right on cue, Mr. Todd Walker lands in. How are you, my friend? Made it. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Sorry about that. Fantastic. Is, is the sun shining down in, in Portsmouth the same as it is in most parts of the UK? Yes, it is absolutely beautiful outside today. Very good, very good. And uh, yeah, we're just discussing the weather in Northern Ireland. It's absolutely fantastic. So um, uh, for those that aren't aware, Todd is um, Villator Media. Uh, he does a lot of work with um, property developers, um, filming uh, their projects. He, he films events for some of the big property events. Um, he does some of his own property as well, as well as a number of podcasts for property professionals. So a busy guy. Um, but he's also um, contracted to prop funders um, to give us marketing support. So uh, I was just about to talk about the updates to the website, Todd. Um, so we've we've now launched um, our funding packs. And if people go to www.propfunders.com forward slash welcome, uh, you'll basically come to a page uh, similar to this. Um, this is that page kind of broken down. Uh, there'll be a Thanks for stopping by a short video from my good self, uh, filmed and wonderfully edited by by Todd. And uh, it's great that Todd, you actually can make me look half decent and sound half decent. Yeah, well, I'd say I'm, I'm not a magic miracle worker, but I am <laughs> <laughs> I'm not far off it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to, uh, you've got the material to work with, you just make it, make it sort of that extra bit special um, and we'll leave it at that um, so yeah, there's a welcome video there and then um, those that land on the page can uh, have a, a free download of six steps to raising funds legally that takes through deal structuring preparing your deal, legals and compliance the pre-launch of your raise actually launching the raise uh, and then the investor relations or follow-up um, so all you have to do is leave your details here. You can see the bottom right. Um, leave your, your basic details and we will send you a free six steps to raising funds legally. Um, now, if you want also a 15-minute viability call with me, you then can book that just to see if you have a project right now that you're looking for funding for. Uh, where well, you can book a call with me and we can um, gladly have that conversation with you. So uh, that's some new features on the website. Um, I encourage you to go there and have a look at it. And if you haven't already, um, you leave your details and you'll get your six steps to raising funds legally uh, and then be part of our community and receive the, the, the weekly funding focus, et cetera. 
Now, another really exciting one, Tom, I'll let you in. Any comments you want to make on, 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 on this? We've also worked on this for probably six, seven weeks in the background to get it all ready. Right, you're still on mute. <laughs> um, yeah, no, of course. So on the, on the page, there's also going to be access to the podcasts that we film and the webinars as well. So you guys will be able to see what's there. So if you're just coming back to that page, you'll be able to get up to date with all the recent people that we're talking to. And they're all property related and, and very you know interesting people to listen to for sure. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, our own feature as well, which I think is just fantastic. And, um, I mean, Julianne, I'll get your comment on this in a minute as well, but, um, we are one of our funding partners is Brickflow. Um, and they have really, what is in effect a compare the market.com for property developers. Um, so if you went to our propfunders.com forward slash start here tab, um, within that tab, you'll be able to compare over a hundred specialist property finance lenders and secure a decision in principle in about seven minutes. Um, so literally it's an opportunity really just to test the viability of your project. Um, if you punch in the numbers and there's like zero lenders willing to engage with you, then there's something horribly wrong with your project. Uh, if you put in your numbers and there's a bunch of lenders willing to give you a decision in principle, well, at least you know that there are potentially some funding options there. Um, now, obviously, that's just the initial high-level decision in principle. Uh, the journey to, to actually receiving um, debt, as, as Julianne knows, one of your other hats is obviously working in finance. But how, how does that sound, Julianne, for the like, developers that you know or maybe always asking questions about what's my lending options? Uh, I think this is really cool. It is like it's it's so good to have something like that. And as you say, even just using it as a tool to test the viability of a project is excellent, especially I suppose for for first time investors, you know, for everybody, obviously, but especially for first time investors, it gives them an idea if it's actually got legs or not. And as you said, and you're so right, it's one thing um, getting the decision in principle, but it's another thing actually completing and drawing down the money. And there is many hurdles in between that space, um, but that is an excellent design. Does that do Northern Ireland, David, or just mainland UK? No, Northern Ireland as well. That's, yeah, it's yeah. absolutely excellent. It, it, it's such a good tool to have, definitely. I think if more people knew about that, I think it'd be really, really, really beneficial, especially for projects that are maybe a bit more complex than others. Yeah, no, that's a good point, the complex ones. And you're saying about Northern Ireland there, of course, the Northern Ireland options, um, there aren't that many lenders, not <laughs> that many lenders to choose from, given the yeah. market over here being so small. But um, yeah, it's a really good way in just for people to, to do a high level test of, of uh, whether it's bridging or um, development finance, then then they can, you know, it's a, it's a great way to start the, the, the capital stack and to see where the journey gets to. Um, so as I say, the, these are all um, new features on our on our website. Um, we're really beginning to, to get in now and do a lot of work with developers on these starter funding pack and the complete funding pack. Um, so the full details are there, but whether you're, a developer just wants to see uh, or have some help um, doing some initial due diligence on the project and preparing a DD pack for a lender or for equity investors and you know private investor partners. Then, then we the starter funding pack covers that. If um, a developer is wanting a more complete, this is like a three month service, probably about eighteen hours of of, of engagement um, that involves a. Uh, sort of crash course on the six steps to raising funds legally. It involves analysis of your of your current property development business um, just to make sure you're uh, efficient and doing the things you can do. And of course, then analyzing projects uh, and looking at um, funding plans uh, for the projects you have. So the complete funding pack then is the more comprehensive um, product. So two products there, reach out to us. I'll be delighted to engage with you uh, and see if one of those suits suits where you're at. Could I just I say, do. David, as well, if you don't mind, um, just your funding packs there. Like I have saw your plans that you've done and the detail in them is incredible. Actually, I would say, and I know our funding side of things has said this as well, like it was one of the best packs that we've ever saw. The detail in it was bang on and the, uh, the, um, the whole amount of detail was fantastic. So it's definitely a good um, good service to provide from you. Yeah, okay, thanks very much. Yeah, that was uh, um, one of the clients was looking to raise senior debt, I, I think, mm. on that one, about a 700 or 760,000 senior debt raise. 
Um, yeah, and we we help them prepare the actual pack uh, information memorandum uh, is what you were sent. So um, you, you sound as if you were happy and your your team and the underwriting team was happy. Yes, definitely. Brilliant. Okay. No, thank you for that. Appreciate that. Okay. So um, market update, and this is really where just you know Julianne and Todd can can throw in the top and forth, um, in, in in terms of anything they have heard or. Um, obviously, all three of us kind of are ear to the ground. Um, in terms of last couple of days, interest rates, Bank of England have left the interest rate at 5.25. Is that a good thing or a bad thing, guys? Any of you? Not ideal right now. However, one of the things that I had heard um, over the past like few weeks or so um, was that hopefully um, at the end of next year, um, or the end of this year, sorry, um, they hope to see a significant reduction. But all these things are speculative, and I suppose we don't really know what it's going to be like until it's actually there in front of us. I mean, it's good that it hasn't increased, um, so that's the positive. Yeah, yeah that's, what, that's what I was going to say. As much as we want to maybe a decrease, yeah. Um, it would have been really negative impact to confidence the market had it have increased. Um, so, Todd, any, any ear to the ground comments on people you're talking to about their reaction to the rate staying the same? No, not particularly. I think, you know, well, I mean, I'd say it's good to expect it. And I just, you know, <laughs> I take every day as it comes. And for me, yeah, I, I don't really pay too much attention because whether I get it now or, you know, at 5% or 5.25, it's not. You know, for me, I don't think it, I, I don't pay too much attention. <laughs> yeah, it's not, not, not on your radar. You know? I'm just happy to get started. <laughs> but when, whenever you have those big sort of five, six million GDV projects that you're looking at, believe me, will. a, a yeah, 0.25% yeah. interest rate can make a, a heck of a difference. In those <laughs> yeah. But you're right, for the smaller, smaller buy let stuff, it's not that, that significant. Um, on, on the mortgage front, um, I know the, there's a lot of speculation that that people are beginning to take their mortgages out for a longer period of time. I don't know, Julianne, if you come across any sort of anecdotal um of that, or is that just people speculating a little bit? But it does seem the trend, the information seems to be that people are maybe because of the uncertainty in the market are, are actually taking their their mortgages for a longer period of time. Well, I suppose it depends on the strategy, but definitely if you have an investor there who is taking out a mortgage and, you know, they can take it over a longer period of time, it's going to make the monthly payments much less. So for cash yeah. flow, it's excellent. And I think that is the main reason people would um, spread their mortgages for longer, to be fair. Um, but yeah, do you know what? It's funny how different people react to hearing different things in the market. Some people will react from just hearing people um, talking about things rather than research researching it themselves you know um so i think it's just important to do your own research as well as what you hear to make sure it's the right decision for you and your financial position i suppose at that time yeah no agreed agreed fully and then in terms of house price predictions i mean this is in some ways a bit of a a bit of a waste of two minutes because who knows what's going to happen but um house price predictions uh, i suppose what the the latest really is night frank um they're probably bucking the trend a little bit and they sort of went with a three percent projected rise this year i think they've brought that down maybe to two two and a half but still still projecting a, an increase in house prices over 2024 so i suppose we'll wait, wait and see uh, as to how that pans out yeah well the good thing is like well about northern ireland this is our prices has been continuously growing. The only place in the whole which was classed as uh, the UK that has continuously been growing. And honestly, I'll say it and I'll say it again, Northern Ireland is such a great place to invest in. Honestly, the return that you get, the the, the property prices, everything is, is excellent here. People in mainland UK should consider coming over here for investment opportunities, Todd. <laughs> that was a great pitch. <laughs> are you are you, work, are you going to tell me you work for the tourist board now? In, in, in as well? I can start. <laughs> and, and that, no, that that's great. So, okay, so before we actually get on to Julianne and the rest of the, the webinar, um, Julianne is is, is on, on our topic. So I'll let you get, get your thoughts together in terms of this this uh work-life balance but um we'll always like provide value for the developers who are um, either on now or or listening in on the recording um and as i say todd does a lot of work with developers uh, obviously um an expert when it comes to um, parts of the media social media space so um we'd like to give you todd like one just focus on one key tip today for brand building so a developer they're on the call 
they're 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 feeling as if they want to get sort of the word out about themselves more. What what's one action they can take and one thing they should be doing to build their brand? One one tip is to be posting on Instagram, either or well, Instagram and LinkedIn photos. So Instagram has a great feature called Stories where you can basically just plop that up as to what you do. And I was with a developer today and he was like, look, I, I just want to get started. I want to do something. But and I was like, OK, well, what kind of content do you already take? And he, he said, well, I take pictures uh, pretty much every site to give investors updates to, you, you know, to send things to developers and things like that. And I said, well, you've got the content there. You've already taken the photos. You've already got them. Now you've got to start like all you have to do is the pretty much the same message you send to the investor obviously if they're happy with it and they're happy for you to share it you need to ask for consent but put that on your linkedin you know what problem is you had on this side today if you've taken a picture and you know i don't know a builder's a brick's gone through a window it's funny put it take a picture of it put it on linkedin and people will be like oh okay well, you know obviously it's not a great thing and obviously it's going to cost someone some money but the idea is you want to show people what you're doing and you're already probably taking photos of your sites and, and your projects so all you have to do is pretty much click post write a little well upload of the photo write a little bit about it and what's going on in that day and just get that out there because the can the thing is with your brand is to be consistent and if people consistently see you on site working with either investors developers or, and uh, builders whoever you know they're going to see you in the space as a as an expert if you do that over the course of a year the longer you do it for the better and higher you know your brand is so that's a little tip hmm. yeah and and you would say every day literally i mean literally if, at if least you can one day, yeah if possible yeah because imagine you saw some guy every single day laying a brick after a year you'd think cool that guy's laid a lot of bricks <laughs> <laughs> and you know you're gonna you're gonna get to the point where if you're on a building site every single day and you're working with architects you're working with developers and you're project managing and you're doing the things or, or whatever it is it's going to be in your profession if they see you doing that day in day out every single day uh, there's no harm that can come for that other than the fact that you've just built a brand for yourself which says i am here every single day i'm consistent i am reliable and i do what i say i'm going to do and and that's a good mm -hmm. brand to have especially in, regardless of what industry you're in so that's very very true very true i know julian you do a fair bit of that's how we kind of connected in the end of this this northern artist voice kept popping up on my LinkedIn profile. I said, who, who is this Julianne White? Every time I turn it on, it's like, she's another building or she's traveling, surveying property. So we then connected and ended up obviously met a number of times now, but you, you do religiously get yourself on social media. I do, but you know what? Todd is right. Like it's, I just don't have time to put everything that we're doing on social media. And I wish I did because Todd's right in what he says and more people see what you're doing, but it's just not possible to do it all the time. I try and do it at least three, three like reels or posts a week and some stories as well whenever I can on like Instagram and that. And then obviously on LinkedIn as well. But ideally, like if you could do it every day, it would be much better, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's just the more you do it, the more you're going to get used to, you know, getting into the habit of doing it. Cause you know, once you realize it, it only takes 30, 40 seconds or whatever to just stop, do it. It's just taking that time to stop and do it, which is the hard yeah. part almost. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But okay. Fantastic. Todd, thank you very much. A really good uh, takeaway tip there. So let's get into our big topic for today. So strategies for work life balance. And this, this is actually one that's quite close to my heart um, anyway, because I, I try and live a reasonably healthy life. Uh, I like my fitness. Um, and certainly in times when I'm involved in property where I've been maybe traveling around the world a lot, or you're just under a lot of pressure, you know, you've got to really think about this work-life balance. Uh, for me, it's a big factor. Um, so um, let me, first of all, then um, sort of officially welcome Julianne White. Um, so Julianne uh, runs a founder and, and MD of Method Property Solutions um, as an award-winning uh, company. Um, I'll let Julianne, you can sort of explain all more about that. But you also uh, are a partner in a um, uh, finance lending company um, that, that is a broker and also lends its own money. So you're a partner in that. Um, you're obviously, you do other bits and pieces of consultancy work. But you're also um, uh, a wife, a mother. And I know you have activities outside your business and you like your holidays, which I've yes. discovered about you. <laughs> so um, introduce yourself and then we'll get into a little bit of this, uh, how, how you manage to get so much done uh, in the time that you have. 
Okay, well, thank you so much for having me. First of all, I do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, my name is Julianne White. As you say, my main business is Method Property Solutions, um, which we provide, obviously, a wraparound service, um, an award-winning wraparound service to property investors in the whole of Ireland, North and South, and internationally. Um, that is from property finds, surveying, refurbishment, lettings, sales, for existing customers and consultancy services and uh, we absolutely love what we do um, we're also a partner in um, a, a lending firm as well and we actually have two investment companies that we're directors of as well or I'm a director of as well and um, so lots of things to to do all the time in business um, and then as you say as well I am a mummy I am a wife I am a mummy to three animals <laughs> Yeah. as well <laughs> i love keeping fit and healthy and i love holidays as you say as well <laughs> yeah we'll definitely come on the holidays i'm sure at, at, at some point there now how how this webinar came about um i've actually got a, a photograph here which uh was taken back um that was last month's northwest property meet yeah um, uh, Porik, um Hilfrey, um and john john or not well john or helps out uh, who's the other guy? Paul. Name escapes me. Robert Brown. Robert Brown. Apologies. Apologies, Robert, if you see the recording. Um, yeah, so I were up there. I'm up early and you, you were speaking that night. I spoke the previous month and we're having a cup of coffee, catching up on things. And it was just like, how do you get so much done? Because you seem to be in Dublin one minute and, and the Northwest and then in Belfast. And the conversation got round to basically how we both organize our days. And and it just struck me that you're so productive um, in, in what you get done. So that's what led into this conversation. So I'm going to come off um, screen share so we can kind of um, have a, a three-way conversation between uh, Todd, you and me on uh, this, this work-life balance. So um, I suppose just by way of, of a starting point, is, is your approach to business and life with the balance in mind, Julianne, or is that just is that just kind of a byproduct of, of what you do? Do you know what? The whole work-life balance is a very fluid concept, I feel. It's one of those things where one week you could have it just perfect, the next week it could go either way. So I think it's something that just needs to be maintained regularly, like especially whenever you have um, young kids. Like my daughters are 11 and 8, almost uh, 12 and 9, actually. And um, it's that's the most important thing to me is to make sure I spend time with them, quality time with them, you know, doing things, going places, whatever it is, even going out for a walk in the fresh air, you know, stuff like that. I think that's so important for me. But whenever you are in business, whether it's property or anything, I suppose it's really easy, um, you know, if, especially if you're extremely busy to like get carried away at nighttime and like still be working at seven, eight, nine, ten o'clock at night. Whenever you just have to stop sometimes because you're more productive if you do take a break, even for 40 minutes, half an hour, and then go back up if you're doing again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's. Do you I suppose where I was going to lead on from that a bit was do do you spend time like planning out your life to make sure you have that work life balance or is it a case of you just prioritize and that's the way it comes out so like have you ever went in any courses like done a weekend you know retreat all about work life balance all about productivity all about having your priorities right or is that just something that's come natural to you. No, I've never done any courses specifically on work-life balance, you know. Um, but yes, I'm always mindful. In the back of my mind, I'm always mindful of making sure I'm there for everybody in my life who needs me, like my kids, like my husband, like my animals, like whatever. Um, because I think that's really, really important. But as as I said there, you know, it is really easy. Like obviously by no means am I like a model of work-life balance. I'm not. It's something that I always have to be thinking about and like maybe it'll come to halfway through the week and I'll think, oh, have I, have I done this, like, or whatever. One thing I always make sure um, with the kids after school or whatever, I always talk to them, how was their day? Anything good, anything bad? So I'm keeping in with what's going on with them as well. So I think um, it's something I'm always mindful of at the end of every day. What have I done that day? And if I haven't done something that I probably should have, with the kids, with my husband, with the animals, whatever, then I'll, the next day I'll put something in place so I actually balance that out. Okay, so give me a a quick sort of summary of of your your day in terms of, 
you know, get up time, what you do in the morning to plan your day out, the balance with the family. And then sort of when do you finish and like what time you get to bed at night? Just give me an idea of a, a normal busy day for Julianne. Oh, well, it kind of just does vary. And I think that's one of the reasons I love being my own boss as well. You know, I can, one thing I'll always make time for regardless of anything else, it's anything to do with the kids, anything, if they're doing a play, if they're doing this, that, I'll always be there regardless. Nothing will stop me doing that. No one will stop me doing that either. Um, But I think I'll get up roughly, say, like seven o'clock in the morning, roughly, you know, weekends are kind of different you know obviously too um yeah. but i'll get up say at seven o'clock in the morning first thing i do is get coffee that's the most important thing get my coffee in the morning <laughs> get the girls and everything up get them ready for school um depending on what's happening that day i might do um work before i leave them to school um and then that's some some of the stuff i have to do out of the way already which means it might free me up depending on where i'm at or what i'm doing if i can go for a walk at lunchtime i'll always try and go for a walk at lunchtime if i'm working close to home i'll take the dog out for a walk as well um because it's just so nice to go out and spend time with animals too <laughs> like um and then after that i look my day is very varied i could have paperwork to do i could have bits and pieces of you know financial stuff to do i could be meeting on site i could be checking on a project i could be doing a survey like you know it just really depends and every day is different for me which I love the variety of that but anyway I try as much as possible to finish at five o'clock does that happen every day no um do I still do work sometimes like really late into the night yes um it just depends what's going on it really does depend for me if I make a commitment to someone like a client or anyone let's just talk about a client if I have to stay up to one o'clock in the morning, I'll stay up because if I say I'm going to do something, I will do it and I will not shake off responsibility on that. Like it's important to me that if I say something, I stick to my word. So as long as I get that done, then I can sleep. If I have something mm. to do and I don't do it, I won't sleep. Yeah. So we'll, we'll just on that now and we'll better see what, what, what the Todd thinks of this. So I, I used to be like that. I used to be, has to be done. I'm going to stay up to no matter what. And then what I found Julianne was that, Five nights of the week, there was something that had to be done and needed to be done. So then it was one or two o'clock in the morning. And I would say about four or five years ago, certainly pre-COVID, about maybe five years ago, my average sleep for the year was four hours, 20 minutes a night. Oh, that's bad. No, that like that was savage. Um, yeah. and, and I then just changed and said, you know what? When 12 o'clock comes, I do not care how important the task is. At 12 o'clock comes... I'm lights out because the knock on effect of the health the next day, not being at your best for the you know the next day. I, I I just find that got to a point that I couldn't sustain that. Um obviously I'm much older than you. So <laughs> I, I I maybe am beginning to suffer the wrong side of fifty and all the rest of it. But uh, to, to, Todd, how do you find when you've gone like I know you've done a lot of editing, you you have maybe hours of editing, would you stay up to get something done or would you just say, no, that's my time for work done and now it's my time. Yeah, if, if it's like a set deadline and the client's like, look, I need it by this time because of this thing. So for instance, say something for this webinar had to be done by three o'clock, I'd have blocked out all the time before that because I know that I have to have the X amount of time to make sure that something is here for this this thing. So if it's, if it's you know, needed, then yes, but obviously then... I do. I, I've always prioritized sleep over everything. I think I said to you um, on our last trip, like I always make sure I get eight hours sleep, regardless of what it is. If I go to bed at if I go to bed at three o'clock in the morning, well, I'm not waking up until you know ten eleven to make sure I get that because it, I someone did um, a talk last Friday at one of my networking events, and they said if you're getting less than if you're getting between sort of anything less than sort of seven hours sleep a night or something, it cuts your life expectancy down. A, a, a ton i can't remember the exact figures but it cuts it down and and obviously then you're not productive for the next day and you're lousy you can't think you can't sleep and it just sort of like like that knock-on effect that you mentioned so but in terms of getting stuff done for people you know if i have to do a 24 hour day I've, I've done i think 26 hours on the trot and you know in a go but then i make sure i get the adequate rest the next day and it's you know that that's that's how it goes mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. I wouldn't go and do 26 hours straight or, I, you know, I I could anticipate kind of the workload and then, you know, yeah. okay, well, I have then this cool down period to, to retire. <laughs> yeah, okay. Make it, yeah. No, no, that's, that's that's interesting. You're kind of on my page a bit where, where some point sleep has to take priority. Um, 
So in terms of organizing your day, Julianne, um, you've obviously got so many things can take your time. Um, how many staff do you kind of have part-time, full-time? Do you kind of work? How many in your team that you'd be interacting oh, with? Oh, a lot. Like, it just depends. We have three teams of, of contractors who does our projects and stuff. Um, we've got a couple of people who'll do any admin if it's absolutely important to get done and I can't do it although I do like to take full charge of everything and make sure everything's being done um so we do we have in total including the contractors and stuff maybe about I don't know 12 13 people maybe in, in total across the different projects you know yeah so that that takes it away from just organizing yourself and also then being responsible for the productivity of, of others as well so how do you start your day you've you've you know sort of like your your life away from business do you operate an electronic diary? Do you map out your day completely? Do you do you leave like blank spaces for certain things? How, what what's your process for making sure you're productive? Yes, so it it really depends. I say every day is kind of different as well, but I will always know what I'm doing the the bulk of it anyway. The week before, so my diary for next week already has everything in it that I need to know. Yes, there are some free spaces left. For example, if somebody, I always keep spaces for surveys. I know it may sound really funny, but always people at the last minute say, oh, like I really need a survey and I need to complete in this property. So I always keep space for surveys actually. Um, and anything else that may come up. Like I think one thing that I've got really good at, which I was bad at even a few months ago is not overloading my diary. Cause for a while I was just like, honestly, there was one day I had back to back or not one day, a good few days back to back to back to back. So much so that actually I maybe didn't even get to eat lunch. I didn't, I didn't actually schedule in to eat. I didn't think I would have to. Um, so it was just kind of getting a little bit too much. So I had to be really mindful. And I am now that whenever I look at my diary for the next week, that I make sure that I have time to chill or go for a walk at lunch or whatever. Um, I think that's really important. So yeah, I have um obviously communicate with all the team, you know, um every every day. Um sometimes more than once a day. They're delighted with that. And um and then obviously I have my diary. I love pen and paper. I've said that to you before. I'm very well fashioned that way. So I have like three diaries in total, <laughs> which actually works really well together for me and it keeps me really productive. And I take great pride in like ticking things off. I absolutely love it. And uh, that is at, at, by the end of every day. I try and have everything marked off. If there's a couple of things that I just haven't had time to do that aren't urgent, then they'll go on for a top of the list for the next day, you know? So I do love having a good diary. Like you, you have to have it. And even like the CRM system and stuff as well, essentially the same stuff is copied in there too. You know, um, it's everywhere so you can't get away from it and you remember what you have to do and when you have to do it. Yeah, okay. No, that's, that's in, in terms then of how you... um prioritize your tasks so you start the day and you have a whole lot of stuff needs done have you got a system of working out what's what's like the high priority and what's low priority are you good at just deleting stuff or how do you you know you start the day you sip your cup of coffee and you say 15 tasks need done what's yeah. your process for ensuring you spend your time on the right tasks okay so my, i am most productive before lunchtime I don't know why, but I am and I know I am. And honestly, this is another thing, which I don't know if this is good or not. I don't eat breakfast. The first thing I eat is at lunch. And it's just so happens whenever I haven't ate, I am really productive. I don't know if there's a link there or not. Um, but anyway, I am most productive in the morning. So any urgent task will always be at the top of the list. Do you know, like eat the frog, do you know that, and like that there. Just do whatever you really don't want to do first, get it over and done with, and then leave the less important things I suppose to later on but it's just a matter of getting the biggest uh most important task done first and then working down the list after that and like if, if you need I am always in the habit of even though I know in the back of my head something isn't due to Friday I tell myself it has to be done by Tuesday so then I know I'll get it done on Tuesday anyway but I know if something bad were to happen then I've still got an extra few days there so I always pretend to myself that things need done sooner than they do so I'm always ahead of schedule that's my plan and I love being organized like that yeah no I thought that makes a lot of uh you're on on mute there Todd sorry someone's just come in I'm just talking to them I'm just trying to make sure it's okay that's okay um uh, just to Todd you can keep an eye on the um whether it's the Q&A or the chat sometimes people put questions into the chat um so if you're yeah on here live now and have any questions for Julianne um, you can stick them into the into the, the chat or the Q&A. 
um, and uh, Todd will be able to, to put those to, to, to Julianne because if we can provide some answers or some pointers to maybe an issue that you're currently having, then then we're obviously great great, great to do that. Um, is there any, any come in there so far, Todd? Oh, he's on there. Uh, anything come in so far? Uh, any on the, the chat? Um, I mean, nothing from any of the guests. I don't think I can only see, I can see the webinar chat. Uh, I think there's some in the in the ordinary chat. It's not the Q and A. I think I think people have put stuff into the. Yeah, you know, I've actually the first one here. So here, here's one's come in, Julianne. Does okay. it help that your partner is fully supportive of the role? or roles you're involved in? So that's obviously a, a very relevant question to a lot of people, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose like, yes is the answer to that. Um, is it is it the most important thing? No, um, but it, it, it is a massive help if that is the case, especially if you have kids and stuff too, because not only is support nice to have in general, like you need support with the kids. If you're, if, say if I'm away doing something in Spain or France or wherever it is, then obviously the kids are going to be at school. So in terms of looking after them and stuff, like support is needed there too. Um, so yeah, it helps massively. Um, and I suppose it allows you to do a better job because you're not having to worry or stress as much about other things as well. If you know somebody else is there to help you pick up the slack, you know. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a. Uh, it, I think that's a good way. It's a help. Um, yeah. but sometimes you do have to just uh, get on with. Uh, and I suppose it depends what's happening in life as well. You know, if if yeah. everything's great in their life and they're being successful and and there are no issues, but I suppose when it comes to maybe wider family issues or internal family, maybe illness, sickness, you know, challenges, financial difficulties, you know, then all of a sudden that sort of partner situation can become important. Um, yeah. But as you say, not absolutely vital, but, but, you know, definitely, definitely helps um, on, yeah. on that front. Um, uh, any other ones there, Todd, in the, in the chat that have been put up? I, I've just done the, the first one there that's there. Right, so we've got a second one, which is, uh, what part does being super organized have to play in achieving the optimal work-life balance? And what if this is not your strength? Um, well, look, being organized in general puts you ahead of anything else. I do think that whether it's in work life or, or personal life, definitely. And I suppose like, if if I'm going to have a day, say for example, um, a day at the weekend which um is going to be spent with family, like making sure that there's something there that we can go and do together, where whether that is something simple or whether it's something more elaborate, just just spending time together. That's essentially it, and making sure I make most of that time. And that's one thing that I am very mindful of, especially with the girls, is making sure we have lots of things to do, quality time together, regardless of what that is. And do you know what? Whenever you're living over here in Northern Ireland and the weather is so awful especially in a sunny day I'm like what can we do outside <laughs> let's just get outside and do whatever um so it's just a matter of um just making the most of, of every minute you have but I suppose as well like it is really important to have downtime like sometimes you know especially if it's bad weather or whatever it's just nice to sit with like the family and watch a movie do you know what not do you know what I mean just just to do that together and not have to worry or stress or whatever about going here or there or anywhere um so yeah, I think it is important to be organized um just to make sure that you are maintaining that balance as much as you can. Mm. I think the the issue around health is something that certainly when I was younger, nobody really talked much about. You know, you were just flat out with business. Yeah, you maybe had some hobbies and interests, but you know, there was an era of the the yuppies and the mobile phones come out and, and it was just like if you weren't like in first in the morning and last to leave at night where well, you're not committed you know it was just the expert no no you have to stay late to, to show me you're committed to this this job whereas that i think has changed in recent years and certainly todd's generation and and todd have worked with you you, you mentioned there straight away first of all eight hours sleep non-negotiable and i also know you're active in the gym and i mean what, what is it you what was it you would try and get done most most days or most weeks how many sort of gym sessions would you get in 
or fitness sessions? At least four, usually. So that's like, for, for me, that's every part of the body, in terms of legs, uh, chest, back, arms, and then uh, usually cardio sessions. Well, especially now, getting towards summer, I've up the, up the cardio quite a bit. So now it's like, you know, sort of 15, 20 minutes of high intensity cardio at the end as well. So you sort of get a good balance of that. So yeah, sleep and gym is just non-negotiable. <laughs> yeah, so you, and then, you, uh, you, food, you're... Sorry, yeah, I could. And food yeah. goes along with that because it's like if you're not eating the right stuff, then naturally every day you're just not going to be running right. You need fuel. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I, I find that interesting, Julianne, because when I was Todd's age, like that was just never a conversation we ever had about I must get it or sleep or I must get to the gym. You know, that that wasn't even our radar. But this younger generation, that now that is that work life balance is something I think everyone's more aware of. And even professionals are really, really religious in terms of, no, no, these things are, are, are really important. And then my work gets done. Yeah. And I think that is so important as well. Yes, obviously you need to have your work done and you need to be accountable and responsible if you've made commitments to be able to like follow them through and stuff. But obviously like mental health, physical health and everything is such a big mm. thing. Like it's obvious in there as well. Like that's one of the things I do to really relax, like in my own like personal time is run and do spin and go out for a walk. And and before um I had to get my last horse put to sleep there, horse riding obviously as well. Like, you know, just it's not just for the physical side of things, it's for the mental boost it gives you as well. Like it's it, it's one of those things that you said, like people I don't know, like 20 years ago, even maybe even 10 years ago, wouldn't have been like even thinking about stuff like that. But it's, um, I think you have to have a balance for all of those things together. You need to be fully balanced to be able to get the maximum amount out of everything. Mm -hmm. No, that, that's a, a good point. That it's the balance that lets you maximize every aspect of that life. So if, if the balance is yeah. not there, then then you know, you're going to be imbalanced and you're imbalanced, you, you fall over. Yeah. Um, you know, clearly um so before i go back to todd for any, any other ones that have come in um what one that i've um, wanted to put to you um i know you do work you've mentioned internationally um i know within um, northern ireland and the island of ireland you're back and forth to dublin how, how do you how do you go about making a day that involves say a drive to dublin which for you i'm guessing is what two and a half hours one way yeah ish? so two and a half hours one way two and a half hours back there's Okay, straight away, five hours of the day gone just in the car. How do you ensure that that's a productive day, both in terms of time in the car and maybe having other meetings down there? Or if that meeting's big enough, it's just two hours drive, have the meeting, drive home again. Yeah, so that's a really good question. And do you see car journeys? I never let them go waste it because I'm constantly doing calls. So that's how I spend all of my car journeys is doing calls, important calls that I need to do. They'll be done throughout that car journey, provided the reception is good. And generally on the way down to Dublin, it is actually decent, but there's sometimes we'll go on country roads and it's a nightmare. But um, normally, obviously you're on the main way there. And so phone calls all, all the time, like like a huge part of my day every day is speaking to people on the phone you know so it's really handy because one thing I would hate I hate wasting time it really annoys me because you're right like you have to be productive and time wasted is, is time you're not getting paid <laughs> as well like so you have to be really really mindful of that so doing any calls is what I would do and if I am going down for a really big meeting somewhere far away then that's fine um maybe it's an overnight thing um driving down to Dublin and back in the same day is really tiring so generally it would probably be an overnight thing um or um if I was going to be driving down and back up I would try and do as as much as I could do down there with the people I need to do meetings with down there at, at one time rather yeah. than going down today going down a day next week do you know what I mean it's just about yeah. consolidating everything you need to do yeah okay no it makes makes sense um any other questions Todd so we've got do you uh what's it do, do you do a regular review of your life so far so to see if you're meeting the expectations that you've sort of set for yourself obviously i think you've got an idea in mind of where you want to be and then do you do you, do you have that and do you keep track of it uh, yeah i suppose i do so like at the start of the year um i'll write down like goals well actually no i have like a five-year plan okay <laughs> that's actually true i forget about these things sometimes but i am um, did a five-year plan this time last year actually 
um, pro probably February, um, March time last year, 2023. And um, obviously then I reviewed it there just at the start of this year, because that was almost a year up. And, um, and then looked at the goals for next year. And you know what? The goals I had had for five time, I had already reached at the end of the first year, which I was really shocked about. And um, my business mentor, actually, this was an exercise I did with him at the very start. Um, I remember at the time doing preparing the goals for the five years, he had said, make sure you're dreaming big enough. Um, make sure you're dreaming big enough. And I thought, well, obviously. like, And he said then, he was like, because you'll be surprised at what you'll have done in this first year. And I thought, oh, we'll see. Um, but he was right, to be fair. So like the rest of the goals I had for like the, the next, I suppose, four years, and I had to like kind of adjust them a little bit, you know, and stuff as well. So yeah, I mean, I think reviewing things on a regular basis is really important. I think I was saying, um, David, to you before about I kind of always done that whenever I was a kid and stuff too, mm -hmm. like writing mm -hmm. stuff down whenever I was, and I found it, found it obviously in my parents' house like years later, writing stuff down of what I wanted to be whenever I was older. I think I was 14 or something at the time. And, and then I wrote another one whenever I was like 16 or whatever and putting the date on them so I can go back and read what I wrote then to see like what I'm actually doing now. So I think it's always important to like set goals, but make them so big because like if you put your mind to something if you, if you have a goal you will find a way to get to it so it's important of not limiting yourself too much because whenever I look back now into the goals I wrote in 2023 at that stage I thought oh well, that's that's a bit like um, ambitious but I, I should have probably made them much bigger um mm. so I, I did then um this year for the next four years I did mm. no that that's very very interesting point just about being able to uh, think you know, have bigger dreams you know think think big as one of the, the famous books was i think that was a massive of thinking big is that one of the zig ziglar's books um yeah, i think so yeah um you know but that that is so important in business and, and and in life and obviously big dreams in business can then sometimes lead to better lifestyles um yeah. but it's, again back to the balance you don't want to too many people i think chase the dream and i've certainly been there before where it's like well I'll work hard for four or five years and then I'll be able to spend time with the family. Then I'll be able to, you know, go and do the things I want to do. And before you know it, you're 40. Before you know it, you're 45. Before you know it, well, for me anyway, <laughs> over 50. T Todd's looking and going, 50, that's ancient. <laughs> uh, so I've been a young, a young man like him. But yeah, I guess, so it depends on the age too. Work-life balance also, you know, is, is age dependent on that. You mentioned your mentor. What part do they play in this work-life balance? Do they help with that or are they just really business only in terms of uh, input no all aspects work-life balance completely um and I, I think that's one thing that is really important like to them as well and it's something you know whenever we were doing our five-year plan let's just be really clear on that too it wasn't just like in business I want to do this it was it was a plan for everything in your life like the whole life so you know um family like um business home uh God, there was like a few different things coming from them all now but it was a plan for everything um which was really good because as we said work-life balance is so so important so you can't just think about business because there's so much other or so many other things to consider as well so yeah I think um having a business mentor has been really important to me as well um th for the whole for the whole side of things and um, not just business yeah. Okay. No, that sounds that sounds great. I think we've time for one more talk before we, we we finish off. If you can pick whatever the the best one is you think that's left, and we'll we'll go with that one. Then we'll move to wrap up. Um. Right. So, what happens when you come up against something that throws your balanced life off track? So, the unexpected or unthinkable, you have. You know, do you have a plan B? Is flexibility one of the key components in sustaining good work-life balance? So something that's like, you know, just throwing a real spanner in the works. Well, do you know what? Real life, like there's always things that throws a spanner in the works. Like, but I think one of the things I am really grateful of is having a mindset that is resourceful. I think one of, one of the, my biggest strengths, I think, is that I am really resourceful. So if something does happen, whether it's in business, whether it's in life, like I always, I genuinely believe it. Like no matter what happens to me in life or in business, I'll find a way through it. And I, I don't stop to think for a second that there isn't a way around it or a way through it. Like I just, that just doesn't enter my head. So I think, yeah, it's just about 
like mindset is everything as well isn't it like it really is like if you you can't have any limiting beliefs like at all you just have to look here I'm in this situation now it's not kind of what I'd hope but this is what I need to do to get to the next stage and you just need to do that and that, that's the way I think about everything in life or in personal circumstances brilliant okay I think that's uh that's a really good one to uh to sort of end on I'm back here to the slide presentation again because uh um, I said before we started the recording, I would uh, it, it indicate uh, what my reference to your speeding was about, but uh, we actually ended up with this date within the diary for probably goodness it was two months maybe um, to do the to do the webinar today, um, or to try to do the webinar, and then obviously we, we we set this date, but then we had a I asked you to come and look at a property for me, and it just so happened the date was this morning, so we actually met up in Belfast this morning um and viewed a property at 12 o'clock and then you had your another appointment and a drive for what an hour and 15 hour and 20 yeah back up the road and then here you are sitting on a on a webinar so it's like there's no way she did that in 60 mile an hour but maybe <laughs> we did maybe the traffic was very late uh on on that so uh so there we are i hope that's been of, of use um in terms of this work-life balance um and i think you've you've had some really good um sort of insights in, into how how you make it work? Is there anything you want to say sort of to, to wrap it up in terms of someone's struggling with this or really trying to make this work? Any any sort of takeaways? What, what, you know, is there a danger in trying to, to overanalyze the whole thing initially? You know, what, what would your input be to somebody? I think it's just as a step back from the situation and like what advice would you give your friend? Um, because we are all so good, me especially, I'm so good at giving advice to other people, but take my own advice sometimes I'm not as good at. <laughs> so like pretend it's a friend, what would you say to them? What is the most important things for you? What is important in your life and build and everything else around that? And um, but not stressing over it because you don't want to add more stress to your life. Like it's just take a relaxed approach, think about it over a period of time, look long term, don't ever be short sighted, and you will be able to get the balance right. Fantastic. There's a there's a social media clip right there, Todd, for us. Uh, I like that. Absolutely fantastic. So, Julianne, thank you very much um, for, for coming on today. Um, we'll just move to, to wrap up here, which is next webinar is going to be the 19th of June. That'll be the third Wednesday at, at 3 p.m. Um, it's going to be a panel, um, and we'll announce the topic um, probably in the funding focus next week. Uh, on, on next Tuesday so that's the date in the diary and of course you can um, get this on our YouTube channel um, so if you go to youtube.com forward slash at prop funders then you'll be able to see this recording goodness in about an hour's time it'll be on, be on there so uh, I say whether you're watching uh, live now appreciate you coming on taking the time to spend with us on this wonderful sunny day and if you're watching the recording, I hope you've enjoyed it. So any last minute things, Todd, I haven't mentioned or need to comment on about prop funders? Um, no, I don't think so. Other than that, Julianne's episode will be coming out at some point on the prop fund, uh, the property funding podcast. So if you haven't already, um, Correct. yeah, Correct. go ahead and, and check that out because that'll be a good episode. It was certainly a fun one to film and listen into. Yeah. However, gonna... Julianne, you were the last one that we did, so it might <laughs> <laughs> Aww, like, the best yes, to last. We've, got, we've got we've got a few people yeah saving the best till last so you've got yeah. something to look forward to but there will be six other episodes coming before so uh there's definitely lots to do there yeah actually a good point i forgot to skip on down the um sort of my residence days as i call them so yeah we actually filmed seven podcasts in two weeks todd was tired he, he didn't quite get his eight hours sleep but he has to learn how to work at the pace of uh, of people like Julianne and me, the pace of the leaders, the pace of the pack. Todd, you'll soon learn. Uh, so it was a bit a bit insane doing three podcasts in one day. I have to say, I was I was pretty tired. But uh, yeah, we did a brilliant episode with you, Julianne, over in, in in Belfast, which, as Todd said, will be coming out in due course. So people can hear a much longer version of your story, your background, how you get into property, all the different things you've done in property. Uh, that'll be on our, our funding, the property funding podcast. And people will be able to see that in due course. So there we are. That's us for today. Thank you very much for joining us, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I wish you every success and every health. Uh, and hopefully see you again next month. 
3 p.m. Wednesday, the 19th of June. So take care, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.